Your voice, your opinion, your community. Fact TV, free speech, protected. It's amazing. 
Satan always thinks he's strong or mightier. He wants to be God. He's still striving for that. He's still pushing for that. He still believes that. And he said, uh, he said, woman said unto God, you shall not eat of every tree of the garden. That's what God said. He said, the Lord God commanded the man, saying, this is 2.16, of the garden thou mayest freely eat, but seventeen of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil thou shalt not eat. For in the day that thou eatest thereof, thou shalt surely die. Then he saw a man alone, and he said, It's not good for man to dwell alone. I tell you what, it's not good for me to be alone. I thank God for the woe man she brought to me. Amen. She is a help me for me. So then it goes on, and, he said, and the woman said to the serpent, We may eat of the fruit of the tree. So the garden, she got that one right. But the fruit of the trees, which is in the midst of the garden, God has said, you shall not eat of it. Neither shall you touch, lest ye die. Now that's what Eve added there. God didn't say touch it. He said eat it. All right? Then it goes on. In the, because sometimes in temptation, you'll come right up to that moment. But if you don't speak it and you don't do it, it's not sin. You can't help who comes to your front door and knocks. But you can help who you enter, open the door and let in to entertain. You understand that? You can't help the temptation. It's strong sometimes. And the serpent said unto the woman, You shall not surely die. <laughs> and remember that Lucifer is now Satan, the old dragon. He was booted out of heaven. Isaiah 14 said, I will be God. I will be God. And God booted him out. Jesus said in Luke 10, He said, I saw him falling from heaven like lightning. And Jesus gave confirmation that Lucifer was booted out. If you follow Ezekiel 28, you'll see that through his reasoning, Satan began to dim. Lucifer is the lustrous, brilliant, shining one, but through his reasoning, he was beginning to lose the anointing of God because God's anointing flows by faith. It doesn't flow by reasoning. And God said to him when he came up to him, remember Job, it said when the angels appeared under the throne of God, Satan appeared with them. So when he appeared before God, he said, Satan, Lucifer, why are you dimming? Why are you losing your shine? He always asks questions. He never gives you an answer, but he asks those questions. Because in your heart, you know why you're dimming. You know why you're sinning. Don't blame your mother. Adam blamed Eve, and Eve blamed the serpent. We're always trying to blame someone else for our problems. It's the world order. It's the system. It's the doctor. It's... It's medicine, it's this, it's that, boom ba da boom ba da boom ba but, And so anyway, it goes on here and it says, Because God knows that the day you eat thereof, your eyes shall be opened, and you shall be gods. I want you to hold on to that. Knowing good and evil. Now that part he got right. But God's not tempted with evil. Look with me at James. He lied to her. In James uh, chapter 1, I want you to see the Word of God. And God told me to slow down, show you the Word of God. And I, I, I've been in this 38 years studying. My first year in Bible school, I thought I was in some kind of a cult. I was liturgical. You understand, I never heard the Word of God preached. I thought I was in some fruitcake place. I rebelled. I was cast down into the principal's office the first time Brennan in 20-some years was cast into the principal's office. But now she's hooked up with me, she reaps a little bit of my benefit. And I'm sitting in the principal's office. Ask me if I want to leave the school. <laughs> Woo! Amen. But I tell you what, that summer, God began to show me. I went in the room. I began to pray in the Holy Ghost for an hour and a half till my mind got, got quiet. you got to understand, my mind, when I didn't know Jesus, went everywhere. I'd go to here to California, to Delaware, down to Florida, up, up to Maine, all over the place. I couldn't, I couldn't sit still in my thoughts. So it took me an hour and a half praying in the Spirit so I could get quiet enough to hear the Spirit of God. It's a still, small voice. If your thoughts are rapidly pounding on you, you're not going to hear God's voice. You're just not going to do it. You've got to come into a place of peace. David said, on the quietness of the evening, I commune with God on my bed. In other words, when I'm quiet... When nothing else is bothering me, when I'm by myself between me and God, I hear Him. you got to understand, you can't meditate when your mind's running here, there, all over the place. I mean, I remember reading sometimes, even today, I'll say, what did I read? I don't know. I'll go back and read. What did I read? I don't know, because my mind's going all over the place. And finally, I center in, and I say, oh, that's what it is. <laughs> Woo! 
It even happened this morning. But God, God can't be tempted. It says in verse 14 of James 1, But every man is tempted when he's drawn away on his own lust and enticed. See what the devil was offering him there? I'm going to offer you my rebellion. I'm going to offer you my nature. When you're drawn away on the lust of that nature, whoo, you'll know evil. I got to know evil. And remember, evil is sin. Everything's not of faith is evil. You understand that? That everything that's not of faith is sin, is evil. And so he goes over here and he says, but when lust is conceived, it brings forth sin, and the fruit of sin brings forth spiritual death. See, the devil was telling them physical death. You won't die. You won't physically die. My Lord, you won't die. Am I dead? I'm not dead. Yeah, he was. He was spiritually dead. He was separated from God's presence. He was serpent. He was Satan. He was the old dragon, the devil. Yeah. See the lies there? It's so, it's so subtle. They didn't know evil. They didn't know sin. All they knew was the presence of God. All they knew was God and His greatness and His goodness and His mercy and His grace and His faithfulness. All they had was God. And here comes the devil, a different thought. You know, today it's the other way around. All we know is the devil. <laughs> All we know is sin and evil. All we know is fear and worry. All we know is sin and sickness. All we know is the dreads of the nature of sin and spiritual death. You start preaching the word of God and religious people go flip up. <laughs> I was going to say something about biting my tongue. It goes, do not err, my beloved. Every good gift comes down from above. Verse 13. Let no man say when he's tempted. See, Eve is being tempted and Adam's right next to her. And I want to show you how weak Adam was. He was a wimp. And so have I many times. And it's probably so have you. Oh, I've never been a wimp. <laughs> I, I am tempted. Let no man, let me read that again, when he is tempted, I am tempted of God. For God cannot be tempted with evil. If he does not tempt it, he's not going to do it to you. That's in Satan's realm. That's who Satan is. God doesn't tempt you. He doesn't test you with sin. That's the devil. God's not in a garden telling them, eat of this fruit. God said, don't eat of that fruit, and you'll be all right. But it says, God cannot be tempted with evil, never, neither does he tempt any person. Amen. He doesn't. God cannot in his nature sin, and he will not call, ask you to sin. He will not do it. Amen. Praise God. He is the same yesterday, today, and forever. This verse is the same as it was in Genesis. He does not tempt Adam and Eve to sin. Amen. Then it goes back to Genesis. He said, when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, it was pleasant to us. Notice that's turned. In Genesis chapter 2, in verse 9, you got to see this. I'm, I have my finger on Genesis 3, 6. And I have my other finger... My index finger, in case your mind goes somewhere. In New York and Philadelphia, and when you said I gave him the finger, that would meant something else. You know what I mean? Woo! If you don't trust me driving New York City, you'll get the finger off and on if you're stupid about it. All right? But anyway, where am I going? Anyway. And out of the ground made the Lord God to grow every tree that is pleasant to the sight. Over here it said, in the second part, it was pleasant to the eyes. I don't know if you know this, but with your eyes, you have sight. If you close your eyes, you don't have sight. You open your eyes, you have sight. You know? Then it goes, and, and it says, and it was good for food. Up here it says that the tree was good for food. And there's no change there, is it? <laughs> there's 
no change there. See, life is the same for each of us, but it's what we open ourselves up to that changes our life. We all start out as a babe. There's no respect for persons with God. He's not going to treat anybody to be something they're not. He didn't create you to be an addic addiction. He didn't create you to worry. He didn't create you to be gay. He didn't create you to be a murderer. He didn't create you to be a thief. He didn't create you to live in poverty. And then it goes on. She had some here. A desire to make one wise. Whoa, 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 whoa. Over nine it says, And the Lord God made the Lord God a tree that is pleasant to the sight and good for food. The tree of life also in the midst of the garden and the tree of good enough. Wait a minute. Where did this desire to make one wise come from? Over in 1 Corinthians chapter 2, if you haven't been watching me and Brenda's show, in 1 Corinthians chapter 2, there's three wisdoms. There's the wisdom of Satan, the wisdom of man, and the wisdom of God. Who, who offered her to make her wise? Who offered her to make her God? God already made them a God. I want to show you something here. The devil is a deceiver. He'll make you believe whatever you want to believe. And when you bite that fruit, see, it's not a plum, an apple, a banana, a grapefruit, an orange, whatever it was there, a tomato. Well, tomato is a vegetable. No, it's not. It's a fruit. So anyway, I throw that in there. Because there's always something smarty. I had grew a vegetable garden. My tomatoes are, well, they're not vegetables. They're fruit. But anyway, there's always one in the crowd. Well, excuse me. And it goes on and it says, desire to make one wise. What was her desire? To be wise. What was her desire? He said, you shall be a god. You shall be a God. Like me and God. We know good and evil. God doesn't know evil. He's not tempted with evil. And he tempts no one with evil. He's lying again. He's just the father of all lies, isn't he? God made me to be a murderer. No, he didn't. He made you a spirit being with a soul that lives in a body to live in his goodness. Amen. Amen. He, he said in ch ch chapter 1, he created six days, everything was good, and at the very end he said it was very good, and he creates man from the dust of the ground, and he breathes into his nostril the very life. And Adam became a living being. He said, I desire to make one wise. She bought the fruit. She bought the fruit. There's a lot of Christians buying the fruit of Satan's temptation. I don't know if God really wants me whole. Because sickness and disease has taught me so much. <laughs> Dear God. He put the teacher inside you called the Holy Ghost. He's so stupid he can't teach you. In 1 John 2 20 says you have received an anointing from the Holy One. 1 John 2 27 says that anointing which is in you shall teach you all things. And is the truth and no lie. We see a lie going on here, don't we? Well, how do I know if it's truth or lie? Jesus, my word is truth, John 17, 17. John 14 said the Spirit of God is truth. My words are spirit and they're life. If you're not getting this, the devil's word is death, separation from God, the opposite of what God created us to be. She took the fruit of Satan's temptation. She ate it down, even the seeds thereof. And gave to her husband with her, and he did eat. Now go with me to Genesis chapter 1. I want to show you something. I'm trying to keep my sermons for 30, 35 minutes. I already burnt 10 away. Good stuff already. Thank you. God said, verse 27, 
Oops, 26. God said, who said? God said. Now this is really God speaking, the Elohim. Do you know this is not Jehovah here, this is Elohim. That is plural, plurality of God. Did you know God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Ghost? Three persons in one. He reveals it as soon as He creates man. Every religion outside of Christianity, in other words, accepting Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, is Elohim. Buddha is Elohim. Satan's tempting us to say he's Elohim. You can be an Elohim. Yeah, everybody believes in God. Everybody believes God can do whatever he But Everybody believes God created. Even the atheists believe there's no God. There's still God in that mix. If there's no God, then why even bring it up? Live and act like the rest of Why fight against it so hard? Why bring opposition to it so hard? I don't believe in adultery, so I don't go around chasing women outside of my marriage because I don't believe it. I don't talk about it. I don't seek it. I don't push it. I don't look at it. I'm satisfied at home. So we just got to get a hold of this. You got to see how simple this is. And God said, let us make man in our, plural, our image. Plurality of God. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Ghost. In John chapter 4, you can hold your finger here, I'm just going to read something to you. Because some of us don't even know what God made us. We don't even know what His image is. We think God's image is to create a real house, not He created the world. Hmm? Some people believe God is some idol or some molten Clay figure. Israel got rebuked and punished so many times for putting up false gods. Seems like they would have learned their lesson, but they didn't. It's all through the Old Testament. Check it out. They even got priests and hired priests to be their priests outside the covenant of God. And they wondered why God wouldn't bless them. You know, after the ten tribes left Judah and Benjamin, there was never a move of God in Israel. If they wanted to get God, they had to come back to, to Jerusalem. Get to touch God. And they feared that, so what they did is they put two calves at the ends of their borders so they had something to worship other than God. Check it out. Jehovah, I think his name was. Solomon's son wanted to Tell them we're going to make it harder on you. I'm going to tax you harder than my dad did. I'm going to make you work harder for us. And the people rebelled. The younger people said, make it easier. The old man said, make it easier. The younger man said, tax them harder. So Job then ran from Solomon because Solomon saw that he had a call of God on his life and tried to kill him. And so he hid out in Egypt. When Solomon died, God told him to go back. And he's the one. God gave him the ten tribes. And he sets up false gods. Just because you're called to God doesn't mean you're balanced. you got to stay with the Word of God and the Spirit of God. I know a lot of ministers got unbalanced. I know some of their thoughts they preach get unbalanced. John 4, 24 says, God is a spirit. If I look at a, if I look at a mirror, I don't see Brenda. I don't see my kids. I don't even see my kids. I see me. When God looks at you, He doesn't see you as a soul. He doesn't see you as a body. He sees you as a spirit being. Are you getting that? You are transcended into this realm, and the reason you're stuck here is He gave you a body to live in. Once this body lays down, your spirit either goes to heaven or hell. It goes into the realm of the spirit. And that's what we believe as Christianity. God is a spirit. They that worship Him must worship Him in spirit and in truth. That's the Holy Spirit and the Word of God. If you're not filled with the Holy Ghost to speak in tongues, you don't worship Him in tongues, then worship Him in the Word of God. 
Make sure your words are balanced with the Word of God. Make sure it's the covenant of God you're singing. And then it goes over here and he says in verse Genesis chapter 26, Let us make man in our image after our likeness. Now that's what the devil wanted. He already was a spirit. He was an archangel. His name was Lucifer, the illustrious, brilliant, shining one. He was full of wisdom and full of beauty. He had music pipes built within him. He was over the worship, I believe, of heaven. He was the protector of the throne of God. I believe he was the ruler of the first world order. And he caused that whole world order to fall before God. Why did he do that? Because he was anointed. He was the anointed cherub. He understood the power of the anointing. When Lucifer lost the anointing, he lost power and he lost the ability to project his wisdom. When he saw Adam and Eve clothed with the garment of God, with the very presence of God in and on them, he wanted it. He knew that that power would give him the ability to rule. After our likeness, let them have dominion. Now notice here, the word dominion has the word, has authority in it. We're to rule or to dominate every created being that had life within it. Adam and Eve was given the ability to dominate them. What is that? That's a God. That's a king. That's a ruler. In some countries that aren't built on democracy, they're tyrants. If you don't worship them, if you don't bow to them, they'll kill you. God doesn't kill you. He lets you go. Now watch this. He said, you are to rule and be dominant over the fish of the sea, over the fowl of the air, over the cattle, over earth, over every, over what? All the earth. What was Adam given? The ability to be God over the earth. Satan's over here telling him, you'll be a God. <laughs> See, in God's eyes, you're already healed. In God's eyes, you're already saved. In, uh, in God's eyes, everybody's delivered, but they have to receive it by faith. Amen. Thank you. What he bought for us through his death, burial, and resurrection is for all mankind, whosoever believes. Yes. Amen. Jesus said, have the God time of faith. Whosoever believes, whoever speaks, whosoever in the Greek language means Anybody, male, female, from birth to death, can believe. Now watch what he says here. So God created man in his own image. Spirit. Frogs don't have a spirit. Toads don't have a spirit. Mosquitoes don't have a spirit. Squirrels don't have a spirit. Cows don't have a spirit. And honey, your cat and dog don't have a spirit. And if you're letting your dog and cat dominate you, you're kind of stupid. Hmm? It's okay, the children, I have a problem with that too. Refuse, discipline, spoil the child, and you'll, you'll have some problems. Wait till they hit teenager age. Woo, doggies. They become aliens in the house. Now I want to show you this. The image of God created, male and female, we're all created in the image of God because we're spirit. In the spirit, there is no male or female. That's only in the natural realm. Folks in the church, we need to get rid of gender. We need to get rid of race. We should not be biased. We should not be racist. We should understand that in the spirit, there is no male or female. That's a physical thought. God will speak to any spirit that not seeks or asks. We have done damage to women. Women were not allowed to preach in the pulpit up to the 60s and 70s. 
They were allowed to go to a missionary field and preach to the heathens that could kill them, but don't preach in our pulpits. Because we don't want to go over there and get killed, so we'll send our women over there and get killed. And God was there to go home. <laughs> and God blessed them, and God said to them, be fruitful. I won't even touch that sexually. Multiply. Replenish the earth. Why? Because the first world order was destroyed. And God wants it replenished with a new type of being called man. That is a spirit. And he wants us to replenish the earth so that he can have his dream and the vision and what he purposed from the very beginning. And he's not going to have it in this world order. But I'm telling you what, if you accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, you'll be part of the next world order of God. Amen. Praise the Lord. He won't let you alone. He won't let you by your side. He'll bring you in. Those who don't accept him, he figures you don't want it. It's not that he don't like you. He just figures you don't want him. And you're going to see that right here. Man, I'm running out of time. Hold on. Well, shut up, brother, and preach. And God said to them, Be fruitful, multiply, and replenish the earth. Uh oh, subdue. Kata, curios is basically what this is. Curios in the Greek means Lord. Kata, according to a Lord, according to a God, according to a prince of power, according to a chief priest, according to a chief king. Kata curiosa. According to being a ruler. I said, Adam, I made you a ruler. I made you the God of this world order. You know what God did? When he gave it to Adam, he took his hands off, he trained and sent it back and sat on the throne. Whatever Adam did is what's going to happen in the world order. Thank God for Jesus. Yeah. Thank God for Easter. Thank God for the resurrection. Yeah. He said, so do it. Have dominion. Whew. Here Satan's over here saying, you can be a God. If they had actually understood them since they were he was in the garden, he could have had dominion over him and told him to shut up and get out. But what did Adam do? He just sat there and let the devil do what the devil wanted. What are you doing in your domain? Well, I guess this is my burden in life. I guess God's teaching me something. Now it's time. Now I'll get off of that one. So let's go over to chapter 3 again. When the woman saw, that's not faith. What 2 Corinthians say? I want my children to walk by faith, not by sight. You understand? God's never changed. He still wants us to walk by faith. Jesus said the most important thing is to have a God kind of faith. Whatever you say, whatever you believe, and you keep saying, it will come to pass. If you want to just pray, ask in faith, believe that you receive it, you shall have it. That's powerful. So she took the fruit thereof and did eat and gave it to her husband with her and he did eat. What a bonehead. You know, we say we're so dominant over the woman, but I'll tell you what, that woman flicks her eyebrows at us and winks at us and does a couple other things. We're weak, baby. Our knees are bucking under. You know what I'm saying? Woo! That's how strong we are. Some of you will get that on the way home. <laughs> But anyway, I want you to see here, there's all the eyes of them both were open. Well, the devil didn't lie then. He said, God does know the day you eat thereof, your eyes will be open. What eyes? Their spiritual eyes are already opened. Their soul was open. They became a living soul. They lived only by their natural man. They were spiritually dead. They were separated from the presence of God. That anointing that God breathed into him, that Christ that filled his life and clothed him was withdrawn and he knew it. Watch what happens. His eyes and his soul was open. His reasoning. Man lives by reason alone. His cognitive. If I can't figure it out, I won't believe it. Oh, Thomas, blessed are those that have yet not seen but believe. Barbecues make me thirsty. <laughs> <laughs> I want you to see, here it goes on. I'm going to I want you to see this. They knew they were naked. So God said, I want you 
want you to look these words up. So this is Hebrew. I'm only in Greek. I have a master's degree in Greek. I'm, I'm working for my doctorate. With who? I don't know. In my own thoughts. And so the Old Testament in Greek is called the Septuagint. So I got my Septuagint out. And my definitions, the lexicon of the Old Testament Septuagint. Guess what word naked means? You don't get it. You got a kick out of this. Disarmed. Unarmed. Woo! Adam says, I lost my power. I lost my rulership. This guy lied to me. I think I was already in God. I already had dominion over all the earth. I lost it. I'm naked. I, I have no power and wisdom left. Here, I'll show you two things. Matthew chapter 4. This is the temptation of the devil to Jesus. He says in verse 9 of Matthew 4, He said unto him all things, Will I give to thee if thou wilt fall down and worship me? <laughs> and Jesus said unto him, Get then hence, Satan, for it is written, Thou shalt worship the Lord thy God, him only thou shalt serve. That's all Adam had to do. Matthew 4 says it a little different. I actually like Matthew 4 a little bit different. He comes to, he comes to Jesus. It's in the second temptation, not the third. In verse 6 of Luke 4, he says, And the devil said unto him, All this power, all this authority that was given to me, what a liar it was given to Adam. Yeah. Give him. Where do I not going to finish this today? But it's good thoughts. He said, The devil said unto him, All this power, this dominion to subdue, I'll give to thee in the glory of them. For it has been delivered to me. You liar, you stole it. You caused Adam and Eve to bite into fruit that wasn't the truth. They were already a God. And you lied to them. You're already healed. So why don't you accept it by faith and walk it out? Or your deliverance. Or your salvation. You ain't getting any of this. The devil's good. He's good at what he does. And the devil said unto them, all this power I'll give you and all the glory of them. It's been delivered to me and I'll give it to whomsoever I'll give it. Wait, then he stole it. He don't have no right to give it to anybody. And Jesus knew it was lies. He said, get thee behind me, Satan, for it is written. I'm going to come back to the New Testament one other thing, but I want to show you something. Genesis chapter 9. What happened to Adam and Eve after they gave their dominion over to Satan? Did everything go awesome? No. Man became so corrupt in the sight of God that he actually said this, I repent that I even made man. That's a sad scenario, isn't it? You ever say, dear God, I wish I didn't have this boy. <laughs> I didn't wish I didn't have each kid. No, I never said that. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> But here it is, God gave him everything he needed to be dominant and subdued. He was an under-shepherd. He was an underhead. He was a lord. He was a god of this world order. And God gave it to him. And when, when Adam and Eve sinned, Satan stole it and he set his seat up in the second heaven. He became the god of this world order. 2 Corinthians 4.4 4. And the other word that means is prince. In Ephesians 2, 2, it says he became the prince of this world order. And then 1st, 2nd Corinthians, 1st Corinthians chapter 2, verse 6, he said the prince of this world. He stole our dominion. And what happened with that dominion? He got man so corrupt that a flood came and God was going to destroy us because he almost repented that he made us. But Noah was right standing with him and eight of them survived that world order. Of this same world order. Watch what happens when they come out of the boat. 150 days later. I know it's only 40 nights. But if you study the word of God. It's around 150 days when they came out of the ark. And God blessed Noah. 
and his sons. And he said to them, be fruitful, multiply, and replenish the earth. He told Adam and Eve, be fruitful, multiply, and replenish the earth. Nothing changed in the sexuality area, male and female. And the fear of you, wait a minute, he said, wait a minute, he said, you'll, you'll have dominion over the fish. He said, should do it and dominate as a God of this world order. Satan stole it so man doesn't have it anymore. All man can do is now is cause an animal to fear him. We call it animal abuse. You can make an animal fear you so much when you say his name a certain well, he'll crawl on his belly and piss on the floor. I've seen it. Piss is in the Old Testament, so I have a right to say it's biblical. <laughs> and the dread of you shall be upon the beasts of the earth. And there we fell. What happened to the dominion? What happened to the power to subdue? Satan stole it. He became the God of this world order. Adam said, I'm naked. I'm unarmed. I've been disarmed from my dominion and my authority. I have no power to do anything. So I hid myself. Because now I fear you what you might do to me. Colossians chapter 2. Colossians chapter church, we're the strongest part, we're the strongest entity in this region. We need to wake up and smell the beans. Or is that smell the roses? I don't know. Digested beans don't smell good. You don't understand that's gas. In Colossians chapter 2, it says this: having spoiled. When Jesus was resurrected, he spoiled, he disarmed, he unarmed the devil. Man, Man when are we going to get this? He might have had a 4,000 year reign, but Jesus came, and now it's the time for Jesus to reign through his church. Man. Thank you for one. Yes. Two. But I want you to see here, back in Genesis, i got to close. The eyes of both of them were opened. They knew they were disarmed. And they sewed fig leaves together because the anointing of Christ, the anointing of God withdrew from them and now they see each other only as a natural being where they were created in the very image and likeness of God. Jesus went up on the Mount Transfiguration. He took with him James and John and Peter. There are those three go again. He told the rest of them to stay back. He took those three up with them. They were his closest associates on the earth. He loved them with all his heart. He bonded with those three men more than the rest. And while Jesus was up there, all of a sudden, the light of God, he appears brighter than the sun, sunny day on a snow day. You ever see the sun when it's shining on the snow? It'll give you snow blindness. It's so bright. Peter, James, and John hits the dirt and says, Oh, 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 is it good for us to be here, Lord? They couldn't understand what's going on. God, Jesus, was trying to show what we have sealed in us. And when we get to heaven, we're going to be brighter than the stars. You know, when you look up and see stars, they're millions and billions of miles away. But let's think if they were right next to us, how bright they would be. They said that it would be as bright as the sun. I don't know if that's true. I'm not a scientist. And everything I just said was a lie, but I read some books. Jesus in Matthew says he'll be brighter than the stars. Jesus was showing us the dominion that we have in our spirit, how bright and glorious we are. And then they heard a voice. This is my son in whom I'm well pleased. Back to Genesis. They saw these fig leaves together and they heard the voice of the Lord God walking in the garden to cool the day. And Adam and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord God among the trees of the garden. And the Lord God unto Adam and said, Where are you? And Adam said, I heard your voice. I was afraid because I was disarmed. 
I lost the anointing of Christ. I lost the power and the wisdom of God in me and on me. So I hid myself. Church, if we understood who we are, we would not keep hiding behind these four walls. We would be tromping down into the region and telling the region who we are because the power of God and the wisdom of God wants to flow on us, in us, and through us. Amen. Rivers of living water. God said to him, who told you that you're disarmed? This is where I want close. Who told you you're to be sick? Who told you you to live in bondage? Who told you you to live in slavery? Who told you to live in poverty? Who told you you live in addiction? Who told you you should live in fear? Who told you you should live in worry? Who told you you should live in barely get along street, Mumble Alley or Humble Alley or Mumbleville or whatever? Who told you? Church, tonight, in your thought life, who's telling you those things in your thought life? Who's telling you? I didn't even get to my sermon yet. I'm getting there. <laughs> this is becoming the meat of it right here. All that other was an introduction. I'll pick up next week. And the Lord said to the man, and ask yourself, who's telling you that you're disarmed? Who's telling you you have no power? Who's telling you have no wisdom? Who's telling you that? When I created the man, I made him in my image, and I want him to walk in my likeness. Are you telling me I'm weak? Are you telling me I'm sick? Are you telling me I live in slavery? Adam, what are you trying to tell me here, my son? What are you telling me? Who told you that?
from the simplicity that is in Christ. The devil stole Christ from Adam and Eve. And Paul saying for 5,000 whatever years later, I'm nervous that the devil's going to steal Christ from you. Christ is the wisdom and the power of God sealed in you. Father, I thank you this morning. We as a church have allowed the devil to steal some of our wisdom and power. The world doesn't even pay attention to what we have to say anymore. They laugh at us. They don't even come to our doors because they don't think we have anything to offer or have anything to say. God, I'm believing in this generation, in this time, in this moment, in BF Vermont, that you're going to rise up some giants that are going to understand who they are in Christ. They're going to take the sword of their spirit, the helmet of salvation, and the shield of faith, and they're going to shed their uh, feet with the shoes of the spirit, and we're going to march right into the camp of the enemy. And we're going to disarm them and pull down the wisdom of this world or and make them feel ashamed for not believing in you. Oh, Father God, this is our moment to rise up and understand who we are. It's not time that we bow and cow under the, uh, under the voice of Satan and the thought life of the images of our thoughts that have deceived us and stole from us and caused us to believe not what God has said. Who told you that? It's time we turn to the Word, Jesus, and ask for the Spirit of God, Christ in us, and ask Him what is the truth. Oh, Father God, as we turn to You in the Word and we turn to You in, in faith, Father, that You will begin to open our eyes of our spirit. And Father, You told me to tell them this when I was praying the Spirit, meditating on it. When you see someone in your family, or see someone you work with, or someone you love and like, they're going in the wrong path and they're being deceived and being taken advantage of or being destroyed. Turn your heart to me and ask me to open their eyes with the Spirit. And I say to you that when you ask me, I will move upon that individual. I didn't say talk to them in the natural. I didn't say talk to them in their reason and their feelings. Don't bring in the condemnation and guilt and judgment. That's my job through the Spirit. And I will convict, convince, expose, and rebuke. That individual will be the most miserable person you've ever met. Because I am going to go in time their spirit, and I'm going to begin to open their eyes of their spirit, and they're going to begin to see the truth, and they're going to have to make a decision on that truth, and some are going to battle with everything they have not to go. But I want you to know, it cannot change. Who told you that you're naked? Who told you you're disarmed? Who told you you have no power, no wisdom? Father, I thank you for everything you're doing in our life. I thank you, Father, when we turn to the Word and we put it to work, that it will come to pass. And I thank you, Jesus, that you're the same yesterday, today, for Lord, you're the same. You changed up. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. God bless you. God bless you. Amen.